The Black Madonna by A. W. Wyville From Weird Tales, May 1928 This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Dale Grothman A Short Spider Story The Black Madonna by A. W. Wyville Houses with shuttered windows, houses with hangdog air running to ruin, houses about which strange tales are told, tales of strange happenings. Such will always fire the imagination. Of such a house I tell. It was situated on the outskirts of a small village, a village famed in the Revolutionary War. I lingered and gathered its history bit by bit, a story that will draw smiles from the unbelieving, yet caused thoughtful men to pause, as I paused, pondering over the strange ways in which fate sometimes even scores. The house had been vacant several years, shunned by villagers. They did not claim that it was haunted. Its gruesome story for bad tenants the last occupants had been two brothers one a tall hawk-nosed surly character and the younger a pleasant chap with dark brown eyes a small mustache slight of build chemists they were brilliant chemists we heard they hired no one doing their own cooking and general work partitions had been torn out and an expensive laboratory installed bottles upon bottles retorts and electric furnaces of the most elaborate description word went around that they were working on a great chemical problem the solution of which would revolutionize a major industry although the elder brother was seldom seen on the village streets the younger would often pass through on his way to the city driving an expensive car sometimes he would stop and talk he talked on many subjects but never his work all such questions he skillfully parried while his main interests were centered on his work he also spent some time on a hobby zoology he would often be seen in the fields on a summer day equipped with a long-handled net a strange combination of interests lights glowed in their house until far into the night a tall figure could be seen moving behind the shades not long after the brothers had moved in there came to the village one night the sound of a muffled explosion lurid flames shot from the house of mystery the village fire department soon had the flames under control however to do so, they had been obliged to enter the laboratory, from whence the explosion took place. What they saw was the talk of the town, although the occupants had got them out as soon as they could, seeming to fear that they would see too much. Some people wondered if perhaps they were not counterfeiters. The brothers repaired the damage, and the talk died down. The next happening of interest came from a different quarter it came in a bunch of bananas a local grocer found it a hairy spider with bright red spots on its back it was then in the middle of winter and the repulsive thing was in a torpid state from the cold instead of killing it the grocer perhaps with an eye for advertising placed it in a small wire cage with a lighted electric lamp for warmth he did not misjudge its potential attraction qualities revived by the warmth it was soon crawling around its cage seeking an opening the whole town had seen it and speculated about it when it was drawn to the attention of the young chemist he being interested in bugs and such as they put it one look at the spider and the young man drew in his breath sharply a black madonna he whispered of course that meant nothing to the villagers 
he explained it seemed that the black madonna is the most poisonous spider known to science death almost inevitably follows its bite this information put the grocer into a cold sweat for he remembered how free he had been in handling it he was for immediately destroying it the young chemist offered to buy it alive the grocer dubiously assented after all it was a clear profit we never saw it again spring came in cold severe snowstorms followed one on another's heels the two brothers were more or less isolated late wayfarers reported that the lights burned as brightly as ever in the house from this point my story will have to be partly guesswork and deductions from what came to light later upon arriving at the house with his prisoner the young man took it to his room to examine at his leisure kept it warm and fed it gnats it seemed to thrive however he did not let it interfere with his research work the two brothers were working independently toward the same goal the elder worked at night while his brother utilized the daylight hours each kept his progress to himself an odd arrangement the younger man won when his brother rose from his bed one afternoon having worried through the night he found the other with shining eyes yes it had been an accident just stumbled on it meant international fame just stumbled on it just an accident the words repeated themselves in the elder brother's brain he almost hated his kinsman all his work for nothing more than life itself he craved the fame that would come with success his brother heeded it not honor was reaching for him and he was blind to the other's expression an expression not good to look upon he locked his notes in the cabinet and went to his room here he made a discovery that sobered him for a minute the black madonna had escaped carefully and thoughtfully he searched the room the spider was nowhere to be found the window was partly open and he decided that it must have departed through the opening well it would soon perish in the cold long into the evening his brother stayed in the laboratory after the first questioning he did not seem curious regarding the achievement the other wondered oh well he would feel better and congratulate him tomorrow he was sometimes like that sometimes a poor sport the elder slowly went over his notes sometimes he stared out the window and fought a hideous temptation his brother came in and worked at his desk the other's eyes rested upon his back it would be so easy to hide and explain it no he must not think such things his hands clenched until the knuckle showed white some time later the younger arose said good night and went to his room could he do it a madness came upon him he bided his time several hours later the door to his brother's room opened and a tall dark figure entered a knife makes no sound and it was soon over the dirt basement provided a good burial ground he washed his hands a maniacal gleam of satisfaction in his eyes better go up to the room again and make sure that there were no blood spots people who make sudden trips to the city and disappear do not leave blood spots on their beds oh he would be clever the room was soon put in order as he was leaving he felt a sudden chill his brother's old sweater was hanging on the bedpost callously he put it on mustn't catch cold now for those notes carefully methodically he transcribed them into his own handwriting his scientific training triumphed over his madness for the time being he was again the chemist as he worked life stirred life in the pocket of the old sweater 
a hairy leg reached for the edge of the pocket perhaps it was the heat of the man's body slowly the revolting creature worked its way up the sweater the man rode on inch by inch the hairy legs reached toward the collar unnoticed then for some reason the spider turned on the underside of his arm it worked swaying with a motion of the writing it continued testing its way on the edge of the cuff it paused then lowered itself onto the moving hand the man dropped the pencil with an oath the next second a long shiver ran over him the blood drained from his face the pupils of his eyes became pinpricks days later the villagers found him dead staring two tiny red spots on his hand the evidence of his attempted theft in front of him the end of the black madonna by a w wyville